Hey there friends out in YouTube land, Rob here. Today I thought I'd bring you another discussion review. Today we're talking audio equipment specifically for things you might use at a wedding, for like a rehearsal or dinner or DJ, stuff like that. Today we're actually talking about two separate speakers of which I have a total of four, two each of the PRX ones and the Eon One Mark IIs. You only see three right here, the other one is over there. In that instance, we're just kind of chit-chatting about these two speakers why I chose them, what it feels like to continue to use them after a year, and have I noticed anything about them that I liked, didn't like. If you're looking at to get into these types of speakers, here's gonna be what I experienced picking them up, how I've enjoyed using them, and why I would purchase these again. If you're wondering, none of this is sponsored. I bought everything here with my own money several years ago, and these are my just unfeathered thoughts. I hope that they help you, and if they do, leave a comment down below. If you wish to pick some up, you can use the Amazon links yourself. If you want to email me and ask me or have a conversation like that, send a tip using Cash App or PayPal, and we'll set that up for you. Okay, this isn't gonna be one of my big videos where I go into a huge detail about this. This is a coffee cup kind of conversation. You guys know what that means. Sit back, drink, think about what we're talking about and check the links below to jump right into it. Now that whoever's still watching is actually here for the video, let's jump into it. When I started setting up my mobile operation for my wedding photography business, I always imagined having a DJ side of the house as well. I wanted to provide stationary photography, videography, and live music to include playing some guitars that you see over there, singing the bride and groom some songs, as well as DJing. The live event sound hasn't exactly happened very much, although I will do requests I'm still kind of forming those things, but this entire process for my wedding photography business has happened over 15 years. And during that time, I've really expanded into the production specifically with video production, and I've looked at getting into the DJ side of the house two times. Now, the first time was back in 2016, 2017, when I realized I just didn't have the manpower staffing and knowledge at that time to do all of those things well. I could obviously buy the gear and hire somebody, but I wanted to be able to be a master of my domain as best as is possible. At that time, I was looking at stackable systems, specifically a base unit, like a sub 15, 18 inch really, and then something like a three-way on the top or a two-way, and of course the sub at the bottom. I have always liked JBL speakers, mainly because I like, number one, how they sound, first and foremost. Number two, I, enjoy the polycarbonate bodies. These plastic reinforced fiberglass and nylon bodies reminds me of a Glock or something like that. Feels good in my hand and I know that it's durable. Also, I have enjoyed the ease of use. For those reasons alone, I was looking at JBL from the get-go. At the time when I was originally looking at JBL starting in 2015, 2016, 2017, I had been comparing to other great brands like Electro Voice, um, the, the EV stuff. I also like the Maui stuff. Getting kind of, some of that gets kind of um, chintzy. Some of the Harbinger stuff would be easy to jump right into. I wasn't interested in anything kind of low end. And then of course, going on to the top end of the stuff, I wasn't interested in that because after all, this is gear that needs to be used to make its money back. At the time I was looking at like the 7, 15 series and like the 712 series or the 612s and the PRX. They even have an upper model in the JBLs, the SRX, although I feel like those are more for professional stadium stage type of use or house of work, anywhere where you might actually mount stuff. In any event, those were the things that were going through my mind. And at the time, I kind of moved away from the idea uh, for the reasons I said earlier, I didn't want to be able to just hire somebody out and I wasn't quite sure I wanted to take that jump and try to jump in to do that all three things well. I knew I could do my photography and videography well. I was not yet solid on the DJ. Okay, so fast forward to just before the pandemic. Nobody knows the pandemic is getting ready to hit and it's time to spend some money buying some gear. And <laughs> I went all out and I got all kinds of gear in order to provide a full service DJ operation, as well as my uh, video and photo work. And I had been practicing in the time, I had been working uh, with other DJs, had been going along as ride-alongs like that, learning, building my music library and really doing my due diligence. I got hooked up with a good friend that I had worked with for years 
but we kind of started working together at a venue, Wizard of Sound, Greg Riggins, and he taught me quite a bit about DJing from behind the deck, working on his gear and stuff like that. And since we worked so many weddings together, it was easy for me to dangle my toe in that and actually get some experience before laying out the money. So as I was working weddings and we saw each other all the time, we became friends over the past four or five years. And next thing you know, I've learned so much, it's time to jump into it. At that point in time, we're actually looking at this gear and I've switched, I've decided that if I'm gonna have a mobile operation, I want something that's easy to carry. And so I wanted something that's fast and simple to set up. One of the things about Greg's units that always sounded great was that he was always setting up the units and it was always uh, an operation even when I would help him put them up and take them down. At the time we had talked about different column array systems and he wasn't quite sure about them but knew that there were some nice ones out there. His opinions have changed over the years since I got my system and has since bought two JBL PRX1 systems to replace his top and bottom units that he would normally take. This significantly reduce the need for additional help setting up, which is something we'll talk about in a minute, but he likes them enough that he's jumped on them too. An answer to a question that you might think right off the bat, can a JBL PRX1 system uh, work in place of uh, a sub, like a 15 inch or an 18 inch, uh, as well as a top unit? And the answer is it's going to vary. Remember, there's so much about unit placement that gives sound to a space and how you do things Generally speaking, when I bought mine, I bought a PRX-1 and an Eon-1 Mark II, figuring that the two of these would do a good job for what I needed to use, around 100 people or less. The Eon-1 Mark II is roughly a 400 watt, 1500 peak watt, and the Eon-1 Mark II, or the Eon-1, is a 1000 watt, 2000 peak watt system. And this one's battery powered with a 10 inch and eight two inch speakers. This one's mains powered with a 12 inch and uh, 12 or eight, six, oh, tw some number of two and a half inch speakers there. If that has already turned you off, then I'm sorry, I've already lost you. But for those that are still here, do not let that sway you. Hearing that this has a 12 and the Eon 1, man, there's so much more that goes on to a speaker and a subwoofer and getting good bass than just the, um, uh, than just the size of the speaker itself. In fact, before buying either one of these, uh, I had thought that when I purchased this one, I was getting probably a 12 inch sub because it just didn't sound like the little wimpy 10 inch subs that you're used to, and it doesn't. This sounds like a larger sub than it actually is, and the same is true for this one. Uh, the PRX-1 sounds a lot larger than the 12 inch sub would let you believe just by listening to it. I can't stress that enough because you can do sound tests and everything, you can go around, you can watch all this stuff on YouTube, you can hear what people say, and there are mixed reviews depending on what crowds and venues that you're playing. For my weddings, I have never photographed a wedding more than 500 people, and since I've been DJing, I've never DJed a wedding more than 200, 220 people, something like that. For me, in those even large event spaces from hotel conference rooms to dedicated wedding venues to barns, two JBL PRX-1s and two Eon 1 Mark IIs have always been more than was necessary. In fact, the PRX-1 has a special feature that helps fatten up the sound. It's got a sub synth built into it, which will automatically give you an extra FX processing octave note lower than your lowest. And I'm constantly told, especially in some of my barn venues that have neighbors that are, you know, roughly 800 to 1,000 feet away, uh, that the subs are too loud. They hear the bass all the way over there. Will it suffice uh, up against an 18 inch sub? No way, not in a, a 2000 watt 18 inch sub. I don't know, not, not, in, not in your life. No, you're in a different kind of event. Right, you're talking apples to oranges. But if you were saying, will this compare to a 15 inch sub? Um, yes, in a lot of ways it does, but in some ways it won't. Obviously, uh, sometimes a sub is just required. However, I think that for playing wedding, even with top 40, hip hop, rap, um, stuff along that, R&B, you're gonna have more than enough power with the two JBL PRX ones. Now, before we get into how they take it down, let's talk about this. My buddy Greg says, after using mine a couple times, both of them or those sets prior to buying his own, he says, the big brother is where it's at. That's what he calls the PRX-1, the big brother. And the little brother eh, just can't quite cut it. So if you're thinking about 
if you're a singer songwriter and you're playing a small venue or something like that, you know, 30, 40 seats, 50 seats, the PRX, uh, the Eon One Mark II probably will do it for you. You plug it in, you got your acoustic, you got multiple uh, inputs back here, you're fine. If you were even gonna do a small gig where you were kind of doing uh, like a little live music or like a DJ mixing or something like that for a house, uh, front of house, something like that, yeah, that would work. If you were doing something where you needed to do some busking, that would work, yeah. It's all good. You're probably gonna have plenty of bass there for you. Remember, it's, it is a 400 watt speaker system that peaks at 1500, so it'll give you some good output when it hits. Where you're going to find the, um, the limitation is going to be when you're trying to fill up an open space. So if you're in a smaller room where the sound can reflect, this is gonna be fine for you. But the minute you start opening up into something that's got a side 30 feet wide and you know 60 feet long, you know, a larger space you might find, uh, like if you were to go to a Buffalo Wild Wings, you know how they're kind of open in the center? This isn't gonna cut it. Uh, it'll do a lot from the front, but it won't get you in the back. One of these will. Now, since we're here talking about it, you see I'm sitting on top of this one. Now they're really sturdy. They've got huge internal volumes. The PRX1, the entire system is roughly 60 pounds. The Eon one is roughly 45 pounds, something like that. And the nice part is that it stacks and puts together pretty simply. Uh, you can set this all in the back right here. And it means that packing this thing up and rolling out to go somewhere is as simple as that. Now, I've got one more unit that's not attached right now. We'll grab it here and let you just kind of see how this works. Talking about the Eon One Mark II, we've got one battery, which will legitimately last easily six hours. It's rated at six hours. You can stack two batteries for a total of 12 hours. And you've got this column spacer right here. The battery always has to go first. And then you've got your, uh, what are they, 12 speakers at the top or however many it is. And then this is what the unit looks like when it's standing, it's nice and tall. I'm gonna take this out for just a moment so that I can talk and look around you. When we're on this side right here, keeping the battery in, you'll notice that we should be on right now. Yeah, we're, we're turning on right here and we've got all of our inputs. We've got three inputs right here, which are XLR or combo jack, well, four XLR, three XLR combo jacks, and then uh, two smaller ones right there that are both, uh, this one is just quarter inch and then this one's uh, eighth inch or Bluetooth. Maybe it didn't like it when I turned it off over there. We've got our power button right here. We can turn this power button off. We can also power this by mains power tap and hold it for a minute and then it'll come on. Now, the thing that you gotta know is as you're doing all of this, sometimes it takes it a second, as you're doing all this, these first two inputs are phantom powered and you have all of the digital effects, reverb, lexicon, and ducting to all of them. This next one right here does not have phantom power, but it has all the reverb, chorus, and delay, stuff like that. The uh, high Z input right here, which is input number four, which is great for things like your uh, guitar or whatever. It's got up to a two mega ohm uh, impedance that it'll take. Uh, and it, it, uh, it loses a few of the effects, specifically phantom power. Uh, and then finally over here, when you're on your auxiliary or aux, you're out and about with uh, your own. You, you don't have any of the additional things you don't need. So your most powerful inputs as far as most functions start with your one, two, three, four, five, and they go down in that order. A couple of things that is nice about this, they've set this up without having a mindset for um, like real sound engineering. They've set it up to be super simple for people that don't know anything about sound, which means that they've just got a red limit, yellow uh, and green light. The green, when your signal is lit up green, for whatever reason, it's red here because it's muted, tap and hold. And now it's unmuted, it's green. That means weak or no signal. As you begin to pass some kind of signal through it from your input, it will turn yellow, which means strong signal, which is good. You want it to be in the yellow. Uh, when it's not in the yellow, it then goes up into the red, which means a limit, something's clipping. The reason this is ridiculous is because normally you'd operate uh, a little bit differently on your, on your board or your deck with your sound levels out and you'd operate based on decibels. Okay, so we've got decibels here, but this and this, the matching of the LED lights and the decibels don't really match up the way that you would expect if you're used to sound. So since I'm used to setting my cameras and everything based off of a uh, decibel meter and all that other stuff, this sometimes is so simple and easy to use that it becomes frustrating. But also, 
it becomes frustrating in another way. It's really kind of deciding what to tell you with the clipping. And this one has a limiter built in for the output, but you have an additional limiter that you can turn on on the PRX1s that is not here, that's not in here, which allows you to have a little bit more sound design on them. But just focusing on this one for a second, it really sucks because uh, you'll notice that the time you start hitting bass on this, your little red over limit clip indicator starts coming on. And once it starts coming on, it's just irritating you. It, it irritates me all the time. And why does it come on? It's because as the signal's getting passed through it, there are different pass-through signals, different frequencies that the speaker is going to receive that is going to cause it to clip a particular signal. If you were working this speaker specifically to uh, you know, a, a soundboard or your mixer or something like that, you'd be able to adjust that on there. And of course you can adjust it here, but because it's not being adjusted by a set amount for the red limit, right? Um, it seems like your adjustments don't really do anything because it constantly, the minute I have bass turned on on this, it's gonna constantly be going into the red. Okay, this is just a stupid feature that could be fixed through firmware that will irritate anybody that likes to have all of their levels across all their boards and all their speakers working properly. What I have found is just turn it up until it sounds good and then leave it alone, right? Uh, as long as this is at the max level and your board's at the max level, then whatever adjustments you make to your board will be fine. The little red light is just a red herring in my experience. And I have ran it that way, but it irritates me to this day. I wish it had a more professional audio interface that I could set my levels or like, I've never seen other speakers, even this speaker doesn't seem to peak as much as this one. The little red peak comes on so much, especially if you're using anything in this auxiliary input. It's just irritating. Okay, so those are my complaints with this. Let's go ahead and I'll show you how easily it packs up. I just turned the whole thing off. It doesn't like it when you do that because it was on. But it packs up pretty easily just like this. Boom, and then it locks into place. And at this point in time, you can just pick it up, set it down wherever you want to go. The next one that I've got right over here, we'll pull this one in front so we can see. You guys just notice I'm sitting right on top of these. Um, this guy right here, this is my other PRX1. Now the unit itself comes with two bags, right? Well, one bag. One bag for this unit because the speakers have to go into it. And the speakers set up just like you would expect on that other one that you see right there. When you pick up the PRX1s, you notice immediately that it's a completely different kind of situation. It's just much more professional feeling, solid, sturdy. The whole thing just feels better. Okay. When it comes apart, it's the same kind of way. Now this speaker uh, gets quite a bit louder. The sound, the, the sound pressure level, the SPL that it can get is to up to 130 decibels. On the Eon One Mark II, it's 123 decibels on battery on main power and 119 decibels on uh, battery power. So you get four extra decibels of output. What does that mean? Nothing that you'll notice. It means you might feel the bass just a little bit more. On this side over here, we've got a couple of things that are going on. We have seven inputs instead of the five on the other side. And the seventh input, just like with the Eon One, is an auxiliary input, so the one eighth inch or a Bluetooth input. So there's not as much that you can do with that, but you can stream to it, which is really nice. Uh, as we continue on around, we, still, we see that we've got four combo XLR jacks and then two high Z inputs. This is awesome. It's also just like the Eon One Mark II, mic and line level switchable. It automatically detects that and switches it. When you're at a line level and you get 56 decibels of uh, preamp gain that you can apply to each individual channel for both of them. And when you're at mic level, you get 100 decibels of gain that you can add. See, now you see that's like a pro audio feature that you a pro sound guy feature. You would know that they would apl uh, apply that here, but then their little color coding lights for what the signal's actually doing are just ridiculously irritating. Not as much on the uh, PRX1, however. Uh, as we go through that, you get all of your different inputs 
except now instead of facing backwards, they're facing straight forwards. You can see them right here. And the uh, encoder and back button, all of these things work. Each one of these little knobs is a rotary encoder knob. So you press it to select it and then rotate to change it. Same thing with your main control knob, works very well. Both the EI-1 and the PRX-1 have these USB ports, which make it easy to power additional things, as well as uh, charge phones, whatever you might need to do. If you're running a mobile guitar setup for busking and you're using the EI-1 Mark II, you can get JBL's power transformer converter that'll take the, uh, 12, they take the five volt two amp output and uh, take it up to nine volts at 500 milliamps or get the one for 12 volts at 1300 milliamps. So you can power your own pedals through the battery of the Eon One Mark II. Now, when we look at these two and we think about how they will be used, I wanna kind of talk about this for a second. And I think that it's important. I'm gonna go ahead and power this one off. It's been uh, plugged in and doing a nice little update. It's off right now. When you think about pulling into any kind of a system and setting up. Sometimes it's a little tough. I think it's important to know that walking in, this is your entire setup right here. So about 120 pounds, maybe 110 pounds, I don't know. Oh, with the whole system. You set this thing up and you walk right in. By the time you get to where you're going, you put your stuff down and then set up. Now the way that I like to use this just to make it all work is I usually put this just like this in this configuration, two of these on my auxiliary locations. So I keep these guys, the PRX ones, I keep them over by the actual setup where the DJ booth is going to be. And then I use the other ones in remote areas around to bring in my sound. It's a couple of cool ways to do that. Each of these has a throughput, so you can send through a full range, a uh, flat response, full range signal. You can gate the signal, you can um, put a limiter on the signal, you can determine to send just the sub signal out, you can continue to daisy chain them straight through. And what I use are the Sennheiser XSWD wireless um, XLR system. So I just plug the XSWD into the back of the pass-through output, set my output in time align, you can shift each speaker by a number of milliseconds that you would like. It's arbitrary up to you. So that different parts of the venue that have different speakers, you know, once you get to like, what is it, 80 feet, you can begin to see and someone speaking uh, an alignment issue with the words that you're hearing and their mouth moving, especially if someone's talking. So if you've got people in the front stage area where your speakers are that are broadcasting back, some of that sound gets lost. And if you put a couple of the PRX ones or Eon one Mark IIs back there, you need to time align them so that the sound comes out properly and that the mouth operates and opens and closes at the same time people are actually hearing the sound. Well, that time align works the same for music so that your bass hits are the same from each part of where the speakers are coming from so that the music is aligned properly at the different areas of the physical location. All of that's possible with these speakers. So although these two main, the PRX-1 Mark IIs, or the Eon, excuse me, the PRX-1s, there isn't a Mark II that I'm aware of, the PRX-1s, they're up there at the dance floor doing their thing, making the biggest, loudest bang, right? They're doing all the music. But then as the venue gets a little deeper, I like to put these on the other corners and then bring them up. Now, no, they're nowhere near as powerful as Big Brother. They're little brothers, but for that little, fill music in the background, you know, 100 feet that way, right? Or even to have out a little bit further in a waiting area, just so that people can have a little bit of multi-zone music, it works great. And because of the, <clears throat> excuse me, because of the pass-through and the timeline features of all of them, uh, you can just daisy chain them as you need, which means that you don't have to have a signal that reaches from your DJ booth all the way out to your furthest speaker. Because you can daisy chain them, you can have your speaker pass through output 
go to that speaker over there, which is 30 or 40 feet away. And then you got a speaker that's seven, 30 or 40 feet away from that, which is 70 or 80 feet away from your booth. But you put your wireless transmitter on the back of that with the timeline output to that one. So now you can daisy chain them and you can even get around things like line of sight from your furthest speakers. So now you've got the ability to literally daisy chain your speakers around corners if you need to using that Wi-Fi or wireless signal or the uh, uh, a, a 2.4 or 5 gigahertz signal, whatever your transmitter might be. And because of that time align that works between them all, you can have them all in sync together. I spent a lot of time talking about that because I use that quite a bit. And it's one of the features that my clients really like about what I'm able to do. I can provide multi zone, multi sound time align music, and then I can choose which speakers I want to do what based on how I'm controlling that uh, the actual transmitters, which I have an app and I can control the transmitters too when I'm not using the XSWDs. All of that being said, it gives the ability to do things like this digital marquee back there. It's just a TV, right? So if we've got something that's going on, I can broadcast the bride and groom's wedding ceremony or a video or whatever uh, over the dance floor or wherever the TV is and have the sound aligned to it with the speakers underneath it. So it just allows for a lot of good stuff. All of that is possible because of the technology built into the uh, Eon One and PRX One, which is really neat. And we didn't even talk about the ducting that they have the ability to do stuff like that. The last thing that I don't really like about them, and I hope that you've seen this has been a like, don't like kind of sandwich as we're talking about it, is the rotary encoders are kind of chintzy. Um, they feel like scratchy volume potentiometers on a guitar from time to time, meaning that when you rotate them quickly, you would expect the setting to scroll fast, but it doesn't. It's almost like there's a lag between them. That can make setting selections a very deliberate process and if you feel like you're in a time crunch where you're moving quickly it will force you to go slowly or you will continuously overshoot the setting that you want it's a terrible feature i don't like that about them at all and it sucks and uh, compare that with on the eon one mark ii that uh over limit flashing all the time eh, it's an irritation uh, to finalize all of this, none of that really matters in the long run because all of these will connect over Bluetooth 5.0 to the JBL Pro Control app, which gives you amazing control from your phone directly over all of the speakers right in your pocket. Now, you've got audio control, you've got um, uh, command control, and you also have true wireless surround sound control, which will allow you to then designate certain speakers as a left, center, right, full spectrum, whatever. So if you wanted to go straight stereo with your speakers and you were working with stereo effects, man, you could do that with all four of them. With one of them, it doesn't really matter so much. But with two, three, or four, you can designate each one. All of that's done on the app. Of course, you could do it through the control panel. It just makes them really, really uh well, really usable. So if you were to ask me, do I like them? 100% I do. If you were to ask me, would I suggest them and buy them again? Absolutely, they sound great. And if you were to ask me, would I ever need to buy a sub? Mm, yes, I think I would buy a sub, but I wouldn't use it very often. And the times that I would buy a sub uh, I would probably be for, I think, outside more than inside. And I think this is the most important part about the sub. If you're inside, um, you're going to have quite a bit of bass response from the PRX1s. If you're playing a couple hundred people, like, like I have, that's my experience, up to about 220 people, 200 to 20, then these guys are gonna go fine. Obviously, if you're doing a 500 person wedding, I don't think these would cover it. I think that the people would soak all of it up. If you had four PRX1s and you placed them around, then you probably would be fine. But in that case, you're gonna spend twice as much as you would spend to buy another base or a sub. I think that you have choices to make. So if you're looking at buying these, the best advice that I can give you is think about the venue size of people you're gonna play and the regular shape that you're gonna play. If you're gonna do a lot of stuff outdoors, you may need a different power solution for subs because you will lose quite a bit outside because there's nothing for the sound to reflect on. But if you're in a structure like um, uh, you know, a venue, a wedding venue, or even a barn, the idea of the walls, the structure, a concrete or hardwood floor is going to bounce this sound quite a bit more. And the sub synth that's built in, which has a digital effect, 
to the PRX1s really adds quite a bit of fatness to your sound and will help out a lot. So that's my take on these. I hope that you have found them helpful. If you have, leave a comment down below. And I'll catch up with you guys on the flip side. Bye for now.